bitch. Rich bitch. Poor bitch. That one. Radio presenter, Miss India Kenya. Former radio presenter. Former beauty queen. Bastard child. Fearless. Intimidating. Flag bearer. Fake. Loser. See, as you've heard, I've been in the media for a very long time. 20 to 25 years, which means I've garnered many reputations. And these are just some of the titles that I've heard when people are describing me. And when I got a job at the Nairobi Star, my editor Frank said to me, Pinky, you live in a world of polar opposites. People either love you or they hate you. But they always ask, who does she think she is? And it's true, my world is a combination of being celebrated by complete strangers and being obscured by those you could think are the closest to me. I once had a friend who completely convinced me that everything that I had achieved was worthless that I really am fooling myself in thinking that I should be celebrated or, you know, recognized for everything that I've managed to accomplish. And the sad thing is, I believed her. I later on learned that she had narcissistic traits. There's another person who doesn't care about right from wrong, who persistently lies and who has no knowledge of the consequences of our actions or our words. I'll give you an example. I was eight months pregnant with my son. And she came to me and she said, I'm not buying anything for this baby. And I said, no, no, I don't need any gifts. She said, no, wait, I'm not finished. I'm not buying anything for this baby because this baby might die at birth. And can you believe she's done that to me? And this is a woman who's close to me and who knows that I've had a series of miscarriages. I later learned that she had sociopathic traits. But aren't we all flawed? Don't we all have some issues? Don't we all feel that if we hurt or harm another with our words or our actions, that in some way we can heal our wounds. But it really bothered me. It bothered me so much. How come not everybody liked me? How come the people closest to me did not show me support? How come they were not proud of my achievements and complete strangers were? So I set off on a mission. If I lived in a world of complete opposites, how would I get the people who don't like me onto my side? How would I get them to like me? I bent over backwards, proving myself. I became unpopular with myself, trying to become popular with them because I was living out of my authenticity. I was proving points, saying the right thing. I was trying to show everyone I was a nice person and indeed worthy of their love. And guess what happened? Nothing changed. I still remained unimportant, unseen, unsung. And then one day, something happened. I was jolted into this horrible reality where my mother suddenly became dependent on caregivers. This is a woman, of course, who I depended on for all my validation, who I depended on. She was a voice, basically, who celebrated me irrespective of what I did. And she had a major stroke. This strong, beautiful, graceful person, the strongest woman in my eyes, 
was fighting for her life. And as I watched her battle, I knew that I lost a big part of her. And I struggled, of course I struggled with it. When I was in hospital, I think it was two days after she was in my ICU. And I was coming to terms or, or questioning or fighting um, what, what was going on, my, my new reality, if you will. This narcissistic friend of mine walked into the hospital room and she pointed at my mom's bed, my mom was lying on it, and she, she, she looked at my mother and then she looked at me and she said, you now have your third child. What would you do if someone said that about your mother? Her words broke me, but I suppose that was her aim. So I threw myself into healing my mother. I did everything to try and get her better, but she was not getting better. I prayed to God and I begged him. I said, God, please, I'll do anything. I negotiated, but it was like he did not hear. And it was maybe from a selfish standpoint that I wanted my mother back because I did not know how to live. I did not know how to thrive. And at 39 years old at the time of her stroke, I didn't know how to dress myself for all these fancy events that I went for without her guidance. And most importantly, as a mother of two, I didn't know how to mother without my mother. How would I survive? My mom had aphasia, which means she lost her ability to speak. She's paralyzed on one side. And as she was learning to walk again and talk again, I was really waiting for her to get better. But I looked at her and I, I thought, She's doing something she should have done for a very long time. She's taking time out for herself. She was healing herself. She was not in a rush to get back to who she was. And then one morning, it was like a switch that went off. That yearning, that want, that need for her to miraculously recover went away. And I realized what it was. It was acceptance. I had accepted what had happened to my mother. And with that acceptance, came an acceptance of so much more. I accepted that I would not be liked by everybody. And I accepted that I was a bad judge of character and I made bad friends and I trusted the wrong people. But I also accepted that the only person who could validate me and have the power to do so was me. And so my journey of self-love began. I knew that if I walked into a room and I was ignored, it would be okay because I would recognize me. I knew if somebody had a snide remark to make, it was okay because it was theirs to keep. I did not have to internalize. I knew that I had to give myself to me because it's true as much of a cliche that it is. You cannot pour from an empty cup. And right now, I needed to pour. I was a caregiver to my mother, but I was a mother to two children who I had neglected while I was trying to heal my mother. 
And then I realized that I needed to mother intentionally and on purpose. So I weaned myself off my mother. And I paid attention to my children. And in that moment, I knew that mothering on purpose is a good thing. And I knew that if I gave her all the tools that I had of self-love, she would not seek validation from anyone. And if I gave her the knowledge that I took on that last year, the rule of a third, which is, out of all the people you meet, a third of them will like you, a third of them will dislike you, and a third of them will be completely different. If I tell her that now, she will be okay with people not liking that. And if society asks who does she thinks she is, she will not have to justify it. Because she will know how to battle her own demons, and she will have accepted herself. So it's okay for them to call me a bitch and me to call them a narcissist. And it's okay for them to call me a loser and me to call them a sociopath. Because now I know it really doesn't matter. The reality is, is it okay with you? Are you okay with me? Are you okay with who you are? See, circumstances reveal who you are. I think that has a lot to do with upbringing. Just go back to my mother for a bit. In all her life and all her circumstances that she's been through, as she's been peeling, unpeeled, and unraveled, what is exposed today as she sits on a wheelchair, unable to talk, is two things strength and grace. And I can talk. I can say the same for myself, but in every circumstance, every circumstance has presented itself to me that I am graceful and I am resilient. And I really hope I can impart this wisdom on my children. They say when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And today on this stage, I honor my biggest teacher, a woman who gave herself to everyone, mostly to me, not so much to herself. A woman who smiles through the pain, a phoenix who will rise from the ashes. No. Not my third child, but my mother. So today, if you ask me who she thinks she is, it may differ a year from today. It may differ 10 years from today, because as circumstances present themselves, I will continue to evolve and become. But today, as I stand here in front of you, I am Tungelan, daughter of a warrior, and I'm mother on the cards. Thank you.